The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gaz, an orc barbarian, sworn protector of the Caliban frontier. I'm Connor Schnold. I play Connor with a K, kobold sorcerer who's a continuous thorn in the Empire's side. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play Zonimus Dinar, a paladin of dusk, using vengeance as a tool to protect the ones I love. I'm Kiri Hester. I play Poppy Tea Leaf. The halfling desert druid determined to save the wild places from the ambitions of civilization. I'm Brooke Bullock and I play Mokrin Stoneshaper, a young dwarf sorcerer finding his true family as revealed by the secrets of the frontier. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Kalban Frontier. The courtyard of Cimarron's Forgotten Palace. Battle, great wondrous battle has been raging both within and without. You all have claimed the elemental keys. You all have spoken the words to weaken the dread Lord, to return him to the prison from whence he came. You are so close. The heat is unbearable. It singes against your flesh, your clothes. Ash streaks are combined with the sweat of this confrontation. But yet, there is still a chance. There is still that small opportunity that he will find a way to succeed. So you must finish this here and now. Zonimus. Damn it, Wiley. Think about it. Every time I've told you to listen to me and you laughed, where have you ended up? I don't know if you're still in there. I'm going to raise my sword up over my head and lower it into the sheath strapped to my back. I'm going to raise a bare hand up to his face. If you're still in there, you're coming with me. And I'm going to grab the back of his head and put my hand around his waist and start pulling him back down to the ground. Give me a persuasion check at advantage. 27. It's still that internal struggle and you feel him for a moment trying to pull away one hand reaches forward and grabs the edge of your cloak you see him shuddering fighting familiar eyes look up at you hey let's go one more ride one last hand when i feel my foot touch the ground i'm gonna spin him around and just brush him right up against yeah the two of you basically are up against the stone of the altar. You've kind of got him pinned back a little bit. And you see, you know, that one hand that's on your cloak is just fighting and it's almost lets go and reaches up to try and close around your throat. You still feel that influence from Cimarron within him, but weak, oh so weak. I'm gonna put my hand around his wrist and reach beside me and pull a dagger out and lay it flat crossways across his chest and just nod. And with his other hand, he will take it. Oh, Gaz! That's my turn. Gaz, you're up. Fire damage for you. Yes, please. Twelve. Half by two. That'll be six. How far away is he from me? Thirty feet. First, we are taking a potion of superior healing. Twenty-one points of healing. 
I am going to rush him, and I you will am... get an opportunity attack from the fire elemental. Please. Twenty-three. Twenty-three hits. For six points, fire reduced to three. I am going to bonus action dash. It's the same thing. It's thirty feet of movement, but it gets me four temporary hit points because of my adrenaline rush as an orc. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. And then I get two attacks on him because I've still got my haste. I've got two actions. So two attacks with my plus one longsword. It's going to miss. 18. We'll miss. 27. We'll hit. 11 points of slashing damage and damage from that. Okay. Yeah, and the uh, fiery aura. 14. Reduced to seven. Reduced to seven. Four of my temp, three of my regular. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. His turn. He does nothing this turn. Wily is in control. He can't fight control back from Wily. Do I still feel the tension of holding onto his wrist? There's still opposition okay. there. Then it's I, just very, very weak. And I, Wiley I is... Holding. Yeah. He's basically having to spend all of his energy, whatever he's got, to hold Cimarron back. Ooh. I've got you, old friend. That's it for him. Connor. Seeing Cimarron Wiley's actions of that there's still that intense struggle going on and feeling the need that we still need to weaken Cimarron a little bit more. He's nearly there. I am going to transmute spell emulation from fire to coal. Right. I need a dexterity saving throw be a 21 on the save. Okay, still takes half damage. Originally 34 cold damage, halved to 17. Still up, but much closer. And how far away from me is he? 10 feet. Bonus action, Draconic Cry. Everybody has advantage. Fire Elementals. Mocker and the one on you, two touch attacks. Mm -hmm. Double natural ones. Connor, two uh, touch attacks. I don't take any damage from it. Oh, that's right. Yep. And if you do bother to fight the one that's on me, it also has advantage against it because the draconic cry. Good to know. Poppy, start of your turn. Yep. Fire damage. 10 points. Okay. I would like to move my movement directly west so that I am... 25, um, put you right here. Put me 20 instead of 25, and then put me five back. Then I'm going to turn on this group of people standing at the altar. I'm going to cast Tidal Wave. You conjure up a wave of water that crashes down on an area within range. The area can be up to 30 feet long, up to 10 feet wide, and up to 10 feet tall. Each creature in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the creature will take bludgeoning damage and is knocked prone. On a successful t- save, the creature will take half damage and is not knocked prone. The water then spreads out in all directions, extinguishing unprotected flames in its area within 30 feet of it and then vanishes. So deck save from Cimarron. If you want to do it towards the west, you would be able to get this fire elemental that's on Connor as well as Cimarron. Go for okay, it. we'll do that. You're also going to get Gaz, Zani, and Connor. You it's guys fine. have advantage on dex saving throws because of haste. So S- Cimarron is going to save with a 25. The fire elemental will fail. I got a 17. I got a 15. So the spell save DC is 18. Okay. 20. So if you got um, 17 or lower, you're going to fail. Mm-hmm. 18 or higher, you're going to take half damage. It'll be 19 if you take full damage. Okay. Nine if you take half damage. But it is bludgeoning, so I, Gaz, you'll quarter that. So nine halved again to five. I didn't save. I oh, didn't you save. didn't save. So, so 19 so. down to nine, nine minus five. I take four points of damage. There you go. And then if they fail, they get pushed? Okay. Um, they get knocked prone. prone yes. If you fail, prone. you are knocked okay. so prone. So I am prone. I am prone. Okay. And if he goes down, I'll stay with him. Prone, prone. No, he's up. He's okay. saved. Yeah, the elementals are immune to the prone condition. But you are wet. <laughs> and I'm off fire. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Is that all for you, Poppy? That was my action. That was a spell. I have no bonus action interaction thing, so yeah, I'm good. Cool. Mokrin. Mokrin's going to... One second. Hold. Fire Hold damage. for fire damage. Yep. 
two points fire. Mockrin's gonna go back to an old classic and he's gonna swirl up a golf ball sized chromatic orb of acid and throw it at the fire elemental that is right in front of him with a natural 20 nice. from SDA dice. Yay. Um, and so that's a total of a 30. Yeah. 17 points of damage doubled because it was a natural 20. So 34. Yeah, this kills the fire elemental. Sweet. <laughs> back to the top, Zani. You're holding him there. Cimarron's influence, you can feel the grip starting to slacken on your neck, but it's still there. What do you want to do? Wiley, if he's ever showed me any look of desperation or hope in his life, do I see any hint of it now? You definitely see a hint of it and you see exhaustion. With the hand I pushed against him, he took it. I'm just gonna reach down and break my hand down my robe and let magic missile fire off. 33. I'm going to then redraw my sword. These starbursts of magic strike on various points on Wily's body. And you feel the hand slacken off of your neck. There is a relieved expression on Wily's face as he clutches the dagger and you feel the energy of a great and powerful soul divorcing itself from Wily's body. The bottle that lays on the altar, you see it rattle and shake as this mass of swirling orange and red energy wafts off of Wiley, is sucked down into the bottle. Wiley, with the dagger, cuts along his arm, taking hold of the bottle. By blood, unbound, bound by blood. And you see the stopper of the bottle circles down, cinches. Magical seal has just been placed, and Wiley goes limp. I still on my turn, and still not as firmly, but holding that wrist that was around my neck. We'll drop to one knee as I lower him down to the stone floor, and I'll say to, it's okay, it's okay, I got you. So as soon as Cimarron's spirit is sealed away, you do all feel a magical pulse. Because it was Cimarron's power that had summoned that elemental. Okay. And as soon as his power is gone once again, that elemental is gone. You start to hear cries of triumph from the battlefield as elemental Miramadons, the armor dropping into the sands once again as the power that held these elementals there dissipates. There are other soldiers who are of a humanoid nature who stay but they are far fewer in number. And you can see Nightmare and Thundercrack crash into the sands. Thundercrack on her side, Nightmare reaching down with his head, grasping the control collar in his jaws, and wrenching his head, breaking it into a thousand pieces. She's free. Connor, do you feel anything? Do I feel that connection to Thundercrack? You feel it start to flicker and start to restore itself. You hear Connor give a gasp, but while this is seemingly finished, still maintaining our presence here seems more important, even as devoted to Thundercrack as Connor is, to making sure that nobody else comes into the courtyard. So the fire portal itself is still open because it's Fortunato who's holding that portal open. But you do hear Connor from Thundercrack hold position. My brother and I are going to the portal. Mokrin. As Mokrin approaches, Wiley looks just as big as he was before and he's unconscious looking there. Pretty much. Barely breathing. Mokrin runs over and as he does, he pops Ore Smasher off of his belt. He killed Gideon. It was part of the plan. If he hadn't been there, then Fortunato wouldn't have been there. Then he holds it. He sees some weird compassion thing happening with Zonimus and he, he, he holds. Just give me strength, Mokrin. I lay my hand on Zonimus and I mumble some words. Mokrin gets the bottle 
and get it to Connor, get it to Gaz, as I slip my hand into Mokrin's boot, reminiscent of the first handful of episodes, and slip out one of the axes he carries. Sleight of hand, just to see if Mokrin notices. Okay. You noticed. I feel it. I keep pulling it out. You stop me. You gave me words to get the bottle of gas. I trust you. I don't know what you're doing with that, but I trust you. Five fate chips, critical success, Wiley in the throat with the axe I just took from Ockren's boot. As I do, I mumble, I got him. I've been saying this whole time. I've got you, my old friend. I've got you. And this time I say, I got him, mm-hmm. my old friend. I got him. And I'll turn and walk to Poppy. And everything is just a distant echo. Cries from outside, the dragon's orders. She is not directly looking at you. She's looking down at her clothes as she puts the fire out and she looks up and I catch your eye and I glance at Wiley and I see him laying on the ground and I see the pool pooling around him and I understand that he has expired. And I understand what that meant to you and how much you wanted that to happen, but also there's a part of you that it hurt to do. You didn't want to have to do that in the first place. And she just holds her arms open and I assume Zonimus would probably drop to a knee and just have a nice hug and a weep embrace. Every moment that he's wanted to rage, to scream, to throw something, to audibly cry at a battle lost at Gideon's funeral in the Mesa is hitting him right now all at once. For a brief moment, it might even scare you. But she trusts you heart, soul, and body, so doesn't even flinch. <clears throat> and he gets it together, and everything seems to come back into focus for him. And he spins around looking for Connor. Connor has joined up with Mokrin and Gaz, encircled around the bottle, probably making sure nobody else is attempting to come into the courtyard. When he looks over and sees Zonimus looking at him. This right here was our part. I know she's out there, but this we have to protect. This is the future, or not the future, of the frontier. Yeah. Thundercrack is back to her old self. I can feel it. Nightmare succeeded in getting the collar off of her. Good. She spoke to me. They're going after Fortunato. Two dragons against one of his kind. Even he'll have trouble. For now, we're still in danger but we've earned a little bit of a rest. Just look over the bottle until everything is finished. I don't think that bottle needs to go back with another crack. I'm not sure where it could go. Until we figure that out, it's ours. All right, but if we could take a moment to look into the future, where do we go from here? Do we stay together, protecting the frontier, or do we separate like the old guardians? Nope. That was a weakness of the old guardians. They didn't keep in touch with each other. They did go to their four corners, but then they then lost their way. And all of us, maybe Poppy, Gaz, Connor, Sonimus, were standing there around this altar. We need to always keep in touch. We need to always know at any time we can reach each other. Probably a little message that says, hey, it's me, Mokrin, don't freak out. <laughs> Connor gives a laugh at that. I, I always enjoyed when you did that. <laughs> I think you're right, but for now, we'll just have to see what exactly happens. We, four of us, and Connor darts a glance over at Gaz. The other guardians have been living for 5,000 years. Eventually, with these powers, everyone that we knew and loved are gonna be gone, including, and he'll dart another look over at Gaz. Also something to think about. Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, 
Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons and Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind the curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d 20 to Curtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday, keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon, and plausible deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. The five of you stand in the courtyard of Cimarron's palace. The sounds of battle around you slowly dying. Overhead, you hear the roars of dragons as Nightmare and Thundercrack head for the fire portal, seeking to close it down and to find Fortunato. After a short while, you do hear the sound of a skiff come over and lands down in the courtyard. Jasper Smithson. And Eopix. The pair of them jump out, rushing over to you all. Eopix looking weak and exhausted, but triumphant. Simron's forces are on the ropes. They're either dead or retreating. Once Nightmare and Thundercrack report back from the portal, then it'll be over. I'm sure, as you know, Simron has fallen, as well as the one who played host to him, Wiley Moran. So Eopix does look over to the altar where Wiley's body lays cooling, gives a nod, looks to you, and says, well, that will definitely put a damper on any of Fortunato's future schemes. If the blood of Cimarron died with him, that's it. He'll have to find another way to resurrect the Empire. Hey, Alpix, it's a really scary question. Is Wily the only one? Do we know? If it took him 5,000 years to track down one descendant of Cimarron, there can't be that many. As long as you know if Wily had any family, Half brothers or sisters or anything? I never know what to believe in him. That makes sense. But he definitely didn't have any children, right? <laughs> That's all he does, it just laughs. Poppy gives you a wink. It might have taken them 5,000 years to find someone related to Cimarron, but they still found one. They'll find one again. And just like before, guardians were chosen. Just like now, I'll slightly levitate up a few feet. I'll look at Opix. guardians were chosen. And when he tries to rear his head again, there will be more chosen. And the cycle continues. You'll make a fine guardian. What about you? Do you do you need an emotion for the feather? It's yours. You earned it. Zonimus looks at him like, uh, Zonimus isn't going to fight him on this. Okay, uh, if you want to rest, then rest. It's time. 
After some time, the forms of Nightmare and Thundercrack return overhead. You've seen in the distance the portal that was open, and Connor, you can actually feel it now, having a connection to elemental fire. You can feel the portal close. Nightmare and Thundercrack circle overhead for a moment before the two of them touch down. Nightmare landing on one of the roofs, Thundercrack actually landing inside the courtyard as she looks to you all. We were able to disrupt Fortunato's schemes, but he disappeared before we could destroy him. I can sense that you all now carry the items I once entrusted to four other individuals as she looks down at Eopix, as well as the bottle Simran Soul returned. We do, look her in the eye. Are you prepared to carry the responsibility that the keys hold? Look around at each of you. I'm prepared. Well, honestly, I don't think this is a thing that you can prepare for. You know, it's one of those heroes have greatness thrust upon them things, but I feel like I can handle it. We are prepared. These items become bound to their wielders. And as you have seen, they grant the wielder existence unchanging. Henceforth, you will be the same as you are now, as long as you bear the key. The keys can never be forcibly taken. They must be willingly bestowed. The only question now is what to do about the bottle. As I said before, we do have it, and we are prepared. The bottle is in our possession, where it will remain. I recognize that keeping it in one place for so long was a mistake. Cock and I row. It needs to move and continually be moving. Great Thundercrack, what better way than for it to move amongst the Sons of the Frontier and its people? Gaz, would you be the first guardian of the bottle and your people? I would be honored to accept this and my people will guard it, Great Thundercrack, with our lives. I will not let it fall into any other hands. I will protect the bottle. And she looks at you very seriously. These great red eyes boring into your soul. So shall it be, Gazda, son of Yazgash and Mazaga. You shall be bound to the bottle of Cimarron. As the others are guardians of the keys, you are guardian of the prison. I am honored to accept this responsibility. When this becomes a burden for you, and let your people know when it becomes a burden for them, they call on us. I wasn't aware you were going somewhere. I'll always be around. So will I. I think we've earned ourselves a little vacation though, right? Like, like a couple weeks. I was thinking I'd like to go home to see my mothers, and I would like some company if you would like to accompany me back to the last stop. I would love to see Yazgash and Mazaka again, but there are some other orcs that I would like to meet first. And she gives Sonmus a meaningful look. Yeah, Gaz, I think it's time I go check in on my mother. I got someone special to introduce her to. Connor looks to Thundercrack. Being the now the guardian of the Key of Fire, I think it only wise I only come back every once in a while, to my home. She gives a nod, looks down to you, gives you a little nudge with her nose. Spread your wings, little one. <sighs> the small wings that are on Connor's back suddenly burst forth into <laughs> large, great wings, enough to lift his stature for flight. Connor has become one of the few kobolds to have done a great deed in order to get his wings. Now remember everything we talked about in your flying <laughs> lessons! Did you know he could do that? I think it's a recent acquisition. It's okay, Poppy. You and I can go flying together. It'll be a different sensation, not an eagle form. He can hold you! He can hold me! Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Sodomus can join us. Cause he can fly too! 5,000 years ago, when the original guardians were given the gifts, they separated, perhaps to make it harder to track them all down. 
I do not believe that worked in their favor. I think it is better that we stay together. Together we are stronger. Together we are the guardians of the frontier. And then Poppy puts her hand in Connor the middle of the circle. Joins his on top of hers. Gaz joins in with his hand on top. And Mock. You know, Gaz, I'm not trying to start a fight with you here, but my mama makes a really mean orc egg omelet too. I'll slap my hand down on top of yours. Everybody kind of feels not the heat of Cimarron, the bright flash and pain of fire, but the warmth of sitting next to a fireplace on a cold night, the warmth of drinking hot soup, and it kind of goes and warms you from the inside out. Um, And I'm gonna cast Mass Cure Wounds, Um, and I'm gonna cast it at sixth level. Everybody gets 24, just in case something happens. <laughs> Where would you like to go? Mr. Nightmare, sir? Mm. Can you do that magic mind thingy that Thundercrack and uh, Connor can do and tell your dragonborn guys that are on our boat to bring our boat back? I would like to see my dog, please. We'll meet them outside. Nightmare just gives a nod. And, and yeah, and as you all walk out of Cimarron's palace, Thundercrack's revenge, wheels around. There are a few Empire gunships that are taking off and just trying to get out of town. But they do bring Thundercrack's Revenge back. Set it down. Wildfire jumps out barking, immediately runs over to you and, you know, starts licking your face. Thank you for the kisses. Now, forget everything about the In Case We Die box. We don't need it! But also, do we have it in the budget for new clothes? Because these ones are all burnt. Yeah, Yopix just kind of comes swaggering, you know, walking behind you guys. I mean, you know, shade is just a couple days that way. I wouldn't mind Clothes. going by and seeing the gnolls, making sure Tavi is back safely in his shop. Yeah, check it out, Tavi, at least. And we can make sure that um, Clan Redmaw's doing okay. Um, there was that young knoll daughter over there. Hey, Yopix. Strom, is he still about? Yeah, you see Strom and Beloved. Again, looking a little worse for wear, but not too bad. So Poppy's going to look up at him and give him a little tap tap. <clears throat> Mr. Strom, sir, I just want to thank you for taking good care of the water key as long as you did, and I hope that I do you proud. Um, but also, can, like, I know I can swim, but can I swim, like, real fast? I just, can we talk about what powers I have? Little one, far more fun to find out for yourself. I mean, I guess. Can I still buy you a very large beer? Oh, that would be glorious. And you know, Zonimus, I'd like to go back to the laughing place for a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, we, yeah, the laughing place. And then off to see your family, and then home to the last stop. All the family. Family? Jackalope spit, Mokrin, what are we gonna tell your uncle? Well, I can tell you this right now. I ain't stepping foot back in Venturis for the rest of my very, very long life. (sighs) Be careful about them nevers, Poppy, but I don't know what you mean by my uncle, Zonimus, because my family's right here. And I think probably word will come back that, and he looks over at Smithson who's you know, maybe over on the other skiff with Iopics or whatever, they're having conversations and wrapping things up. I think this was a venture that just weren't possible. And maybe the last time anybody saw Mocker and Stone Shaper was at Fort Russian Water. And we don't know what happened to him after that. Fort Russian Water. Yeah, I remember that day. Huh. Oh, Mocker. And the good news is we don't have to go through it again. We have a flying ship. And a folding boat. And a folding boat. But then again... I wonder what I could do to a dam. Well, seems everything's wrapped up around here. Let's go take our vacation. I agree. We make our way to the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the Black Dragonborn want to keep on this crew, Mm -hmm. we would love to have them stay on, if that's okay with them. They just kind of look to you all, and, you know, the leader 
kind of gives you a little bit of a nod and we appreciate the offer, but our Lord still has use for us. Okay. We wish you well. It will be much to restore the forgotten places of Nightmare. I believe he also has a strong desire to find Dreamweaver. Well, let us know if he needs our help. I would like for Nightmare to be happy and find love as well. Everything will be well once they are reunited. I agree. Before Connor steps on the boat, he turns once again to Thundercrack. I'm glad that you're back to your regular self. It is good to be back. And it was unfortunate that it happened to you in the first place. If I could have done anything differently, I would have. But I'm still loyal to you, Thundercrack, always and forever. Of this, there can be absolutely no doubt. But with these new powers, I'm best served somewhere else as the Fire Plains Key Guardian. I told you, little one, spread your wings, go fly. I will. I'll miss you. And back to the collars, there's still some green dragonborn and kobolds in a mesa in the central of the frontier that still need some help. We will get agents out to them. Thank you. And he gives a deep bow to her and steps onto the boat. And if we can be of service, mighty nightmare, in helping any of the dragonborn kin, please let me know. If we have need of you, we will call. So, you all get on to Thundercrack's Revenge. You all go to Shada. You take some time there, some time to explore, to rest a little, make plans. Afterwards, Poppy, Zonimus, the two of you make your way to a humble home out on the frontier. There are surprised shouts of happiness as Zonimus, your mother, and your sister come out to greet you. Your sister gives you that little bit of a slap for being away for so long. They didn't know if you were alive or dead, but they seem glad to see you. And they welcome the two of you in to stay for as long as you'd like. Mokrin, Connor, Gaz, I'd say the three of you probably head off on your own for a little while. Eopix actually invites you all to come spend his last days. He takes you all somewhere quiet, teaches you a few things about what you can expect from being guardians. But after a while, one evening, he stretches out and relaxes and closes his eyes for one last time, surrounded by friends. But then after some time, you all reunite and you travel on to the last stop, setting the skyship down in an inconspicuous spot. But the five of you walk up the main street of town and Gaz, two very familiar faces have come out to greet you. Yes, Gash coming to cup your cheeks, kiss your forehead before looking down. Well, this is quite the surprise. You know, we had kind of written you off. We, we didn't think you would see, we would see you again. We barely see this one every 10 years. But you come home with some of my favorite people. Come, come, there is much to talk about. And so you walk into the last stop, stronger, wiser. The world's a little different now. You all almost feel more connected to it somehow. And as the sun sets on the frontier, the group of you spending time outside of the stables at the last stop, the roaring fire going, orcish cuisine being cooked, mead and a little bit of shiny moon pulled out in celebration of a homecoming. In a quiet moment, Zonimus Something almost seems to catch your eye. A ghostly glint, a swish of a coat, a little bit of warmth, but it's gone in an instant, and you return back to your companions as night falls and you enjoy the last stop. Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Caliban Frontier, is Ash King as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Mokran Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Teeley, 
Connor Chenault as Connor the Cobalt, and I'm Michael Cross as Gaz. Special thanks to our Silver Star Paladin patron, Shenanigans Unplugged. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician P.J. Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of TabletopAudio.com, Sirenscape, and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Caliban frontier. Double natural ones. Oh, oh, I thought that was going to be the other way around. I did too. I did too. <laughs> you son of a dwarf. It's <laughs> the luckiest dwarf ever. Connor, two uh, touch attacks. I don't take any damage from it. Oh, that's right. Yep. So, but one would have critted. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Why do you keep trying to touch me? I'm obviously immune. <laughs> I'm here for the distraction for the other. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just oh, pulls out one of those sunscreen things. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that feels so yeah. nice. It's like a sauna. I'm sorry, Mockrin. You're on your own, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, again, that's not what I thought you were going to say, so you're good. That's all right. We got this. And Gaz pulls out his sketchbook and starts. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted so badly to be like, first. We need to get Gaz a new kilt because all that fire damage. Everybody's clothes are just gone. <laughs> um, and I'm going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Um, and I'm going to cast it at sixth level. Everybody gets 24, just okay. in case something happens. <laughs> Rocks fall, everybody dies. Yeah. <laughs> One of the moons crashes down. <laughs> <laughs> we take the boat across the Great Lake, and everything's nice and peaceful and serene. Jason jumps out. <laughs> 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 oh, <yes. laughs> so <laughs> Fortunato jumps out of the water. <laughs> right. The Oklahoma, riding the Oklahoma wait. octopus. You gotta wait here for season two now. Do we have it in the budget for new clothes? Because these ones are all burned. Gas has a giant hole in his in the rear of his kilt. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange because I never used my tail. <laughs> yeah, I was all crinkled and fringy. Yeah, you see Strom and Beloved. I go over and give him a hug. <laughs> around his ankle. Around yeah. his thigh. Yeah. Around, or not thigh, around his... Uh, yeah, he just leans ankle. down yeah. and like his hand, you know, as big as the span of your shoulders. Pap, pap, pap. Oh, like I was him. talking about Beloved. Oh. <laughs> 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 Mockrin will hug strong. Can I still buy you a very large beer? Oh, that would be glorious. Wildfire nips her ankle. We don't have that in the budget, Poppy. <laughs> 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 that is far too big of a beer. <laughs> Family, jackalope spit, Mokrin, what are we going to tell your uncle? Stephen Whistles and jackalope Jack spit. spit. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Johnny gets the MVP award for the day. Yeah. That is a thing now. As night falls and you enjoy the last stop. Beautiful. Wow. <sighs> That has been Keep Tales from the Colvan Frontier. Thank you. <sighs>